Hello True Believer. Today we're going to go through how to build a simple truss in Inventor. So this is for my engineering students where we're trying to build a balsa bridge in Inventor. Um, so we can see how it all sort of makes together. So the big thing here is we need to ask ourselves what is data? And as we start asking that question our mind's going to explode with awesomeness. As we start working out that data helps, data needs to go on my assignment. And most importantly at the end we'll finally go aha uh -huh, and we'll go data dis determines decisions. Okay, so let's begin. Um, we're gonna go here, we're gonna create a new uh, file and we're gonna create a part file, which is basically the wireframe of uh, the truss that we're gonna build. And then eventually we'll make an assembly file where we can put material onto that truss and see what happens. So to start, we'll go sheet metal and we're doing millimeters because we're not American. And we'll go start new sketch and we'll go X, Y. And we're gonna go from the beginning and we've measured the uh, distance of this, oh hang on, before we do that, let's just zoom out so we've got enough space here. Um, I know in the past sometimes we have a bit of trouble with this. Let's keep going. One more. Perfect, awesome. So here we go, we'll go to the start a line. And instead of 510, we'll go 540 across. So the reason why we've added a bit more is so that um, the truss has something to rest against on the testing jig. So our testing jig is 510 millimeters across, but we want to have a bit of um, area for that to sort of displace the force across. We're then going to go at zero degrees. And now we're going to go up and we're going to make that, let's say 270, which is half of 540. And we'll do that at 60 degrees. And click. Then we're going to bring it back down at 270 at 60 degrees. And click 270, 60. And then finally, if we line that up back up on the green dot, it should get to 270 and 60. Fantastic. Done. So now we've got to go back and put a line on the top for the roof. And we'll go across. And there we go. We've built our simple truss. Okay, so that's that's basically just a um, wireframe mesh. That allows us to sort of see where it all goes. So now uh, we need to save that. And we'll save that as not warrant, it should be warrant trust, sorry. Warrant trust, there we go. Fantastic. So now we're going to build our assembly file, which allows us to put materials onto the design. And we'll go down to assembly, standard, millimeters, and we'll double click there. So now we're going to place our Warren truss down and there it is and just press escape and then there it is so if we go to our front view spin that around we can see our truss so now we need to put some materials on that so if we go over to design insert frame and we need to save this so we'll go to Warren truss truss and there's a whole heap of different libraries that we can sort of choose from. And if you look here, um, you can sort of change that around. So the one that I found that's really useful for us is we're going to go to JIS. And we're not going to do I beam. We're going to make it a square because that's sort of what Bolsa looks like. And we're going to make them six mil, which is what the measurement is. And Mile still um, has similar properties to um, Bolsa in that it's really good um, under tension, but not so good under compression. Okay, so now that we've got that all selected, we just literally go click all that. It um, automatically applies it, so it's got all the green meshes around it. Click apply, then OK, then OK. So now we should have our frame built, which looks pretty cool. Awesome. So to test this, we're going to need to do a little bit more. So now we've got to actually do a simulation. So we're going to go under frame analysis. So under frame analysis, uh, we're going to create a simulation. It's going to be static analysis because there's not going to be any movement, especially with the load that we're going to put in the center. And we have to do exactly the same sort of things that we've been doing in class. So we have to fix the bottom. Otherwise, the force will just push it all the way through because this is an artificial um, universe, basically. So if we go here and we fix the points at the bottom where the force is basically going to be applied through, so here and here, and now we're going to apply our force at the top. So just to be consistent, I'm going to make sure that it always adds up to 100 newtons worth of force. So click here. And we're going to make that 50 newtons on this side. Okay. 
And then we're gonna put another force on the other side of 50 newtons. If we can get it. There we go, awesome, 50 newtons. Fantastic, so now if we go okay. And so we've got two fixed pins down the bottom, force getting pushed down the bottom and gravity sort of working that way down. Now, if we run the simulation, Inventor will go through and do all the mathematical calculations instead of doing the methods of joints or methods of sections that we've been doing in class. And you can see the total amount of displacement that will occur. So um, it's got a scale here to show the, uh, the measurement in millimeters of how far it moves. So anything in blue has zero movement. And as we move up the scale to green, to yellow, to red, um, red has the most displacement. Now, if you look at that measurement, it's not actually that much when you think about it. It's 0 0.005, but it does allow you to sort of see um, in an exaggerated situation of where most of the movement's going to occur. Okay, so most of the movement's going to um, happen in here, which is the bend. Now, we need to think about that bending when we're looking at the compression of balsa, um, because if there's any movement like that and there's a lot of compression force going through here, that is probably going to be one, be one of the most weaker points. So if we go over here to results and we open that up and we open up our normal stresses and then down to S axial, this actually shows us all the tension and compression in the beams, which is what the method of sections or method of joints um, methods that we've been covering in class. So if we go S axial and we open that up, um, that actually shows you the tension compression based off this scale. So um, it's based off megapascals. So depending on the thickness, so we can change the, um, the width and the height of all these steels as we did with um, the dot under the design when we inserted the frame. But if we come back here to the frame analysis, um, we can see that this beam here is under compression. So, and then anything in red is in tension. Now the scale isn't quite zero. So um, while this is green, it still is actually in compression if we look in here under the scale. So you just need to be mindful of that. So. This beam has a lot of displacement and has a lot of compression. So um, that could be one of the potential uh, weak points as would probably be here and here. Okay, so that's sort of what you need to start thinking about when you uh, analyze this truss. Now, you can also then generate a report. So if you click on report and we go complete, it will then go through and run all those simulations and give you a whole heap of useful data to help you sort of make your decisions. So. If I bring that across here, um, gives you sort of the mass um, based off steel, so it's not quite useful, but as long as you're consistent with this, it will be useful when you compare the different um, simulations that you run. The area gives you the volume, um, and then it also gives you all the different um, variables of what the materials that were used. But then if we come down here, you have actual pictures of um, what we were talking about with the magnitude of the forces uh, the displacement and the S-axial um, forces that sort of go through. Um, all very useful sort of pictures and diagrams um, that can help you sort of make the decisions as you go through. Okay, so like we said, the S-axial forces is probably the most um, important thing and it shows you where all the max amount of um, points occur. So I need to have a think about that. Now just to run through that again, I'm going to actually do exactly the same thing, but this time I'm going to do it with a three tier trust to see what sort of happens in the differences between it. Okay, so we're just going to close that down. Yes to all. Okay. And close that one down as well. So now we're going to go through the same process again, just so that you've seen it. So we'll go apart, uh, start 2D sketch. We're going on the XY plane, um, zoom out again so we can fit everything in. Oops, that's not, that's an in inches, sorry. So that's a common mistake. Uh, nope. So make sure you click on new or you set the defaults to it. So we'll go sheet metal millimeters. And then we'll go start 2D sketch on the XY plane. Click on the hand. We'll zoom out. Zooming. Oh, went too far. One more. Perfect. Awesome. So now we're going to do exactly the same process. 
go along here on the green dot and click and we'll go 540 again at zero degrees now if you click here and press escape that's where a lot of troubles happen so we'll make like this false beam here please don't do that just um, escape and go back and make sure it's still all connected now this is um, where we need to sort of bring the calculator up again um, we go 540 and we divide that by 3 we'll get 180 okay so these measurements need to be 180 60 and click then 180 60 click 180 60 click 180 60 click 180 60 and click and then one last point down the bottom there fantastic so now we're going to also connect the top and then that top Oop. from there across awesome so now we've built our truss so we'll save that and we'll call this um, Second attempt, and we'll go second attempt. Fantastic! So that's all saved. So now we'll go back up to new again, and this time we're going to, going to create a um, assembly file to place that all in. So we'll go place second attempt, place them there, press escape, and then now we're just going to save that straight away. I'll call this second attempt for the assembly file. And we'll go to the front, rotate that around, and we'll just zoom in a bit. Awesome. We now need to put the uh, frame on again. And because we've done it already, all those settings are the same as before. And then we'll go apply. Okay. And okay. And now we'll run another simple frame analysis. So we'll go frame analysis, go create solution simulation, um, lock the pins down again. So we'll lock that guy down there. We'll fix that point down there. And now we'll put a force at the top. So because we've got one node in the middle, which is perfect, um, we'll just place the force straight away on there. We'll have the 100 newtons. And now we'll run our little simulation. Fantastic. So what we'll see in here, there's a whole heap more displacement sort of occurring in all these members. Uh, we've got 0 0.006, um, which if we compare back to our original one here, uh, it was 0 0.005. So there's more displacement that's occurring in this mean, and it seems to be sort of a bit more spread out as well. So there's a lot more sort of risk for compression members. Um, so if these are guys in here are in compression, that could sort of um, allow for the force to get um, to basically snap those points. So if we got S axial, yep, they're in compression. So this could be potentially a lot weaker through here. Um, this beam's in here is in tension. So that's in tension, tension, bit of compression on these sides here as well. So um, if we look up here as well, so this is goes up to 1.6 in tension and 1.6 in um, compression, but a lot more of the members are in compression, which won't um, do with, um, in particular, because we're using bolsters. So we're, we're trying to make most of the members go into tension. So if we look back here, there was the original force, but it was only in a small amount of tension. So maybe it might be more useful um, having these beams in compression or thinking about how could you sort of change this beams here around and whatnot so same sort of thing have a look at the s axial forces look at what's happening in here and try and make some more decisions about how can you sort of spread that load okay so um in this case this is probably a bit more of a fail compared to the other so as promised here's the metal gear solid snake are you okay snake snake <laughs> so we've had a bit of a game over moment um, and hopefully we sort of learn something from this. So keep playing around with these frames, have a look at the compression and tension forces and try and think about how 
Can you swap these uh, members around and make it a bit more into tension for us? Okay, thank you. Happy designing and happy inventing.